Hello, I'm Commander Wiggy B. This is Elite Dangerous version 3.0.2, and welcome to an update on NPC piracy. In this video, I'll be discussing the state of the piracy mechanic, changes that have been made since 2.4, and the best ways to make cash at the moment. I'll be looking at recent changes to EDDB that impacts upon pirates, and finally, I'll be touching on megaships, basically how to find them. I'll be covering how to pirate them in a later video. So first up, the state of the piracy mechanic. In short, it's broken. You can quite clearly see the issue from the background footage. Disabling an NPC's power plant has no effect on their ability to manoeuvre, shoot, charge shields or jump away. It doesn't matter what ship you disable, the result is always the same. I've lodged a bug report with Frontier and their response is on the screen now. It looks like we'll be getting a fix in a future update. So what should we do while we wait? The easiest method is to shield tank. I've produced a video on this before, but previously I only recommended it for small ships that were difficult to disable. Applying this method to a T9 with 5 hard points requires a bit more work. I've therefore retasked to one of my anacondas, reassuringly vulgar, as a shield tank pilot. Here's a quick description of the build. The most important feature is the weaponry. This ship is fitted with a mix of lasers for taking down shields. However, pretty much any weapon loadout would work here, so fit your favourite. The important parts are in the small and medium slots, which are fitted with seeker missiles. You'll see why shortly. The utilities are a mix of shield boosters, chaff and heat sinks. These are then topped off with every pirate's favourite, the D-rated manifest scanner. I've not fitted a wake scanner to this ship as I've been testing in an anarchy. If you're getting good spawns in a secure system, then you'll obviously need to fit one. I'll skip over the core internals, as they are pretty unimportant for the task in hand. In the optional internals, I have 256 tonnes worth of cargo capacity. This isn't quite enough to empty a well-stocked T9, but will still make you a good bit of cash when full. For shielding, I've gone with a 7C bi-weave. The increased regen is great for shield tanking when you're trying to empty larger ships. As shield tanking requires limpets to travel further, I have two size 5A limpet controllers. These give me a total of six active limpets. The build is rounded out with a 4A interdictor and a 1A hatch breaker. Time to go and play pirate. Okay, so here's a typical target, a competent T7. We're in an agricultural system and the ship is fitted with a mining laser, so it's virtually guaranteed to be hauling low temperature diamonds. As this is also an anarchy, we're good to go and loot it too. Once the ship has dropped from witch space, try and get a shot in quickly. This will aggro the target and stop it jumping. Next, take down the shields using as little excess force as possible. Remember, you're not trying to kill it. Once its defences are down, we're going to switch to missiles and take out the majority, but critically not all, of its offensive capabilities. Make sure you leave at least one weapon active, as this will stop the ship retreating. Destroy them all, and it will immediately try to jump out. Be aware though, the mining laser doesn't count as a weapon. Point defence turrets should also be targeted. Frag cannons, small multis and pulse lasers are the best to leave behind, particularly size ones. Don't leave beams, as they will take more out of your shields. Missiles should also be targeted, as the splash damage will kill your limpets. Once you've softened its capabilities, you're good to park up and deploy your collectors and hatchbreakers. The target should now circle around behind you and start shooting. In this case, the remaining size 1 frag is totally ineffective. One new feature is significant variation in standoff distance. When I recorded my previous shield tank video, NPC ships usually sat about 1.2k away. This distance is now quite variable and seems to depend on combat rank and possibly other factors as well. In this case, the ship parked 750 metres away. Closer is definitely better here, as it reduces the round trip time of our limpets and speeds up collection. We can also use a very simple trick to reduce pickup time further, reversing slowly towards the loot. Limpets can deliver cargo when your speed is below 10 meters per second. Any more than this, and the item they're carrying is destroyed. When your cargo hatch is deployed, your ship's speed is reduced by 50%. Unfortunately, programming hatchbreakers briefly closes the hatch and results in your ship's speed increasing. Reversing at 4 or 5 meters per second is therefore the fastest you should reverse. 
If things are still going too slowly, it's possible to speed things up a little further using FA off, as your speed doesn't change when the hatch closes in this mode. Occasionally, you'll have to change direction, as your target will not stay directly behind you, and ejected cargo drifts upwards and outwards away from it. Watch your speed when you make the adjustment. I lost a few tons from this ship by travelling just a little bit too fast. So that's it for shield tanking. Now I want to look at an alternative method, taking out the drives. This is a technique that I've tried several times previously and actively advised against, as I've always found it virtually impossible. However, a video from Commander Two Fingers changed my mind and had me revisit it. You should find a link in the description, as it's definitely worth a look. So using the same poor NPC, I've targeted his drives with missiles and left him drifting. Taking out drives doesn't bring a ship to a halt, and as a result he's still travelling at around 240 metres per second. This is way too fast to loot, and so the ship must be halted before we can begin. The trick to this is to match the target's vector, overtake, and then gently nudge them to a standstill. Far easier said than done, but I do like a challenge. My method, which doesn't use much FE off as I'm polling at it, goes like this. First, match your speed and direction to the target. Then use vertical thrust to lower your position slightly, without changing your heading. Pass by the target and then travel for about 1000 metres or so. Switch to FA off and pitch 180 degrees, so that you're pointing directly at your target. Make sure you do this without touching your thrusters. When you re-engage flight assist, you should now be travelling backwards at the same speed as the target. Gradually slow down and let the ship approach. I try and keep my speed differential below 100 meters per second to avoid damaging the target when we collide. Try and use vertical and lateral thrust only when making fine adjustments. Make sure you don't pitch or yaw as this will change your steady state heading. Let the ship collide and then repeat. Halting this ship took me 4 hits over a period of about 15 minutes. Woeful compared to Two Fingers example, but great fun. That said, I'm getting considerably faster each time I try. If I can get the time below 5 minutes, then I'll probably start using this technique far more often, as I'll more than regain the investment while looting. When you finally get around to selling your sparkly contraband, you should find another rather pleasant surprise. In 2.4, diamonds used to fetch around 51k per tonne, but a system was in boom. This has had a buff in 3.0. Diamonds now sell for upwards of 80k a tonne. Filling my anaconda takes about an hour in a good system, considerably less if I bag a T9. This effort now nets me around 20 million credits. What's more, if you're not already elite, it counts directly to your trade rank and is an extremely fast way to rank. Outside of Elite, there has been an unfortunate change to the Elite database tool eddb.io. Previously, the Systems tab allowed players to search the entire galaxy of populated and unpopulated systems. This was extremely useful when looking for secure systems to pirate in. A good system will have low numbers of populated systems nearby and a high number of unpopulated ones. NPCs high wake following an interdiction, and if you're starting in a backwater system, the chances are good that they will jump to an unpopulated area where you can rob them without interference. Sadly, the only populated systems option has been disabled. Apparently this is the result of the database expanding to an unmanageable size. Searches still indicate how many populated systems are nearby, but players will have to check in-game to find out how many unpopulated systems are in the vicinity. And finally, megaships. I think it is fair to say that this has been a rather underwhelming addition to the game so far. Playthroughs from the beta suggested that the available loot would be low value and the danger high, so why bother, particularly given the buff to diamonds. On the off chance that things had changed in the live build, I decided to have a look for myself, and this is where I hit my first obstacle. As far as I can tell, there is no way to find the ships in game. As you can see from the background footage, there's a banner class ship currently stationed in the Cigar system, within visual range of Morgan Market. Skipping onto the systems map, and absolutely nothing is visible. Galnet also draws a blank. I eventually went to the Canon Research website. Thankfully the commanders there have catalogued the ship's locations and their routes. I've placed a link in the description to the Canon Research website, 
which also contains a wealth of other useful information. If you've not been before, I would highly recommend that you head over. So once you've located a megaship, scanning it with the Datalink scanner produces a pleasing blue shimmer and some additional interaction points. Cargo racks can now be scanned with a manifest scanner. The contents of the four bays in this ship are hopefully on screen now. In total, there were just shy of 500 items in the hold. However, most seem to be sub 10k in value. Will this be worth pirating? I'm honestly not sure. If it's quick to loot, then perhaps. But that's for another video. There are several other interactable features on this ship. However, as yet, I've only scanned the ship log uplink. This provides details of its intended jump route. Essentially the same information that you'll find on the Canon website. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please do leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. If you hated it, please let me know why. I'd also be very interested to hear your thoughts on the new megaship piracy mechanic. If you master bringing tumbling ships to a halt, I'd also love to hear your tips and tricks too. 07 Commanders, fly naughty, Wiggy B out.